If you're interested in attending Catholic worship, come consider the 10 o'clock a.m. Mass at St. Anthony Parish in Alston, Massachusetts. We're located just four blocks up from Soldiers Field Road at 43 Holton Street. You can check out our website at stanthonyalston.org. That's stanthonyalston.org. And come to the 10 o'clock Mass and experience our chanted Liturgy of the Eucharist every Sunday. Let us offer our con consecration to the Lord. Lord, we offer up to you this day on this very special celebration of the chair of Peter. Let us be your servants. Let us glorify your name. Let us be humbly standing before you that we may bring the message of the gospel to all by the way we live our lives. And we ask this through Christ our Lord. Well, today is a special day in the church. It is known as the chair of Peter. And in light of that, it is uh, a feast, so that means uh, even though it's Lent, you're going to hear the gospel, I mean the, the Gloria at Mass today. The chair of Peter recognizes the role of the Pope. Now, I don't know if you know the history of how all that happens, but uh, the church in its early days, um, and it's still the case, had certain... Um, roles where you had certain, uh, obviously based on the apostles, but certain bishops who became patriarchs of different regions. So you have the patriarch of, for example, Antioch, and you have the patriarch of Rome, and you have the patriarch of Jerusalem. And the senior patriarch became the bishop of Rome. The, the the patriarch of Rome, the bishop of Rome. And to this day, that's who he is. So the Pope is the person we call as, you know, the, the pontiff, the, the high priest of the church, but he's also the bishop of Rome. And so he said, well, who's the bishop of Rome? The Pope. Oh, I know that's where he is, but who's the bishop? The Pope. <laughs> the Pope is the bishop of Rome. And that all began with um, the early days of the church, and that's who we recognize, that's who we look towards. And of course, the chair of Peter, where we recognize Peter as the first pope. So that's where that comes from. So we're looking at the role of Peter and his successors, the latest of whom is Francis, uh, through history, and we recognize that, that that's what we're celebrating today. Our two readings that we see here, one from the letter of Peter, for probably obvious reasons, and one from the Gospel of Matthew, which we will see as obvious reasons, um, are powerful readings that we can glean lessons from them that are important to all of us. And the first one is talking about uh, Peter addressing the elders. Now, um, elder is a term that today we would recognize as the role of the priest. It's kind of an interesting story. We had a um, parishioner in our parish uh, when I was in um, a previous parish and uh, in the Hispanic community, and his name was Elder. I think he had a a different first name, but basically that was the name that everyone called him, Elder. And I remember I got a phone call from someone who complained, another priest, you know, who he was on our video channel, and who is this Elder, and why do you call him Elder? Because that's his name? (laughs) Because he understood that he was concerned about a title called elder, um, which today we would call uh, presbyter or priest. So keeping that in mind, and what Peter is saying to the elders, or what we would call today the presbyter or the priest, he is saying how to act as basically the pastors of the people. And you can take this lesson right across the board. In other words, if you're not Catholic and you're listening to this and you're saying, how should, if you happen to be a a pastor from another faith, how should I act? Or if you happen to be uh, someone who maybe is going to talk to your own pastor, how, what is the rule? And it's right there. Um, Basically, and this is where a great lane line to follow um, that what we're called to do is to be examples. 
That's the greatest way to lead others. Now, there was an old style of pastoring, and it may have actually existed right across the board in all different faiths, that the pastor had to be very stern and strict. It was interesting. I had an interesting story the other day where I was talking to people from uh, from Brazil, and I talked to them about the old fire and brimstone preaching. And I said, you know, I can do that if, if you know, if, you ever, if anyone ever needs them. I mean, I, can, I know how to do the old fire fire and brimstone preaching, and they had never heard that term. They had no idea what that meant. So maybe that's something that's more uniquely American. I don't know. But that was that old style, and some people still do, that fire and brimstone preaching. And what the fire and brimstone preaching is, best example, had to be studied in schools. I don't know if they still do. Sinners in the hand of an angry God that was preached in the Congregational Church out in Northampton back in, I believe, the 18th century, uh, might even be before that, actually, by uh, Reverend Jonathan Livingston. And that was this whole concept that at any moment, remember, this is not Catholic, at any moment, God could just, and this is the word he used, flick the people who he's holding over hell by a tiny thread, flick them into hell. That was that old fire and brimstone teaching. And here you're seeing Peter saying, you don't want to lord over. You don't want to be there. How do you want to be? You want to be that way by example. That's a really important lesson, especially today, uh, not only for the uh, feast of the chair of Peter, but also for the reality that we're in the midst of Lent. So, as you know, at this time, I always remind you that you have a standing invitation to our 10 o'clock a.m. Mass every single Sunday. And remember, at that Mass, um, that's our chanted Mass, so I chant the Liturgy of the Eucharist, and you chant in response. So it's, it really gives a very powerful spirit to the Mass in the Liturgy, which we're called to do, a very reverent lit- Liturgy. Now, if you want to come to experience the 10 o'clock a.m. Mass, you're welcome to come, but... Uh, you may say, you know, I'm not ready for that. I'm, I'm not ready to commit. So when the basket comes around, I'm not going to put anything into the basket, but I don't want anyone to be looking at me as someone who didn't put anything in the, gla- in the basket. Trust me, no one does. But if you are concerned, write the word radio down on a piece of paper. That's all. And put that into a basket into a collection basket. That's all. Just write the word radio down on a piece of paper and put that word into the collection basket. And um, that way we you know that you're coming here, you've accepted our invitation just to kind of check it out and to help us to build our parish. Now remember that only works for St. Anthony Parish. It doesn't work for any other parish or church. So um, if you don't currently call a local parish home and you want to sit in on a Sunday Mass, the standing invitation is for you. Come on down to St. Anthony Parish, 43 Holton Street, Alston, Massachusetts, 02134. And remember, we are conveniently located just a stone's throw from Soldiers Field Road in the Mass Pike. But do keep in mind, don't throw the stone. And always remember, you can find us at stanthonyalston.org. ST means saint, stanthonyalston.org. So we're looking at these powerful lessons that we see here. So the basic lesson from 1 Peter is lead by example, and that's so important. And then we see that in the gospel, we see uh, Jesus telling Peter, who has acknowledged that uh, Jesus is the Christ, the son of the living God. And he tells him, number one, that he learned this not because he he discovered it on his own, but this has been revealed to him. And in doing so, he will give Peter the keys of the kingdom of heaven. Why will he do that? Why is that important? And the answer is simple, because Peter, it has been revealed to him who Jesus is, and it has been revealed to him Jesus' mission. Do you understand that? So he understands what the mission is. And the mission is that through his church, which is the body of Christ, that Peter and all his successors and the church will lead people to the kingdom. And that's an important aspect. And there are people that are going to respond to that leadership and others who won't, who will say, no, I want to live my own kingdom, go away. Um, And there's nothing much you can do about that except for that constant invitation. So maybe one of the things that we could look at as part of our prayer this 
this year or this week and also during Lent is ask the Lord to give us the grace to be better examples uh, and that's right across the board, whether you're a pastor or not, whether you're a priest or not, uh, whatever, to be better examples so that we can be better leaders in the church, in our homes, in our work of what it means to be uh, a, a Catholic, or if you're not Catholic, uh, a Christian, to be live by example. And that's, of course, what St. Peter says. And so remember, the most important thing you can do, you can't not do anything if you're not doing that, is to be a person of prayer. Interesting story that I happened to see on Twitter the other day. Apparently, St. Thomas Aquinas, and a lot of people will cite him as the ultimate authority in many teachings in the church, but he said that he learned more from his praying before the Blessed Sacrament than all the books he ever read. And that's an important distinction. That's an understanding of the power of contemplation. And if we have people who are teaching people the way they should be and are not people of prayer, are not sitting before the Blessed Sacrament, and if you can't sit before the Blessed Sacrament, you can sit before a streaming of the Blessed Sacrament, which is why many churches do that. And you can find them on YouTube and other places places. Um, This is what we're called to do, to be people who uh, are deep in touch with the Lord, do some good spiritual reading, deep in touch with the Lord, so that we may grow in our ability to be great leaders. And how are we great leaders? We are great leaders by example. So keeping that in mind, remember we are here every Monday through Friday at midnight and three o'clock in the morning here on 590 WEZE, and we're also on your favorite podcast platform. Have yourself a blessed day. I want to call your attention to Catholic TV, which offers great faith-filled, family-friendly programming 24 hours a day. You can find your cable channel at www.getcatholictv.com, and you can watch online on the free apps or check out the YouTube channel. Daily Mass, Rosaries, the Divine Mercy Chaplet, and the Our Lady of Perpetual Help Novena are all available online and on demand. Check out CatholicTV.com. Remember, when you're looking for a place to attend Mass, and if you don't already attend Mass at your local parish, come to St. Anthony Parish in Alston, Massachusetts. We're located at 43 Holton Street in Alston, just a few blocks up from Soldiers Field Road. And you can check us out. Come to our 10 o'clock a.m. Mass and come to experience our Catholic worship at St. Anthony Parish in Alston, Massachusetts.